Hello, and welcome back to Will's Recaps. Today we delve into the gripping world of cinema with a spotlight on one of the most intense and thought-provoking sniper movies, The Wall. This film is not just a tale of marksmanship, but a narrative rooted in true events. Join me as we unravel the story of a brilliant Iraqi sniper who, in a startling turn of events, humiliates an American soldier, playing a psychological game that leads to an unexpected and powerful conclusion. Without further ado, let's dive into the intricacies of The Wall and explore the captivating twists and turns that make this movie a must-watch. In the approximate year of 2007, amidst the aftermath of President George Bush's declaration marking the conclusion of the protracted conflict between Iraq and the USA, we find U.S. Army Staff Sergeant Matthews and his spotter, Sergeant Alan Isaac, assigned to a pipeline construction project in a desolate region of Iraq. Their mission, to monitor a formidable adversary notorious for targeting and eliminating all Americans laboring at the site, despite the official cessation of hostilities. Concealed behind the rocky terrain, the duo strains to pinpoint the enemy's whereabouts under the relentless desert sun. Over more than 20 hours, as the sun beats down, Matthews, exhibiting a growing impatience, asserts that there are no Iraqi soldiers present at the site. His scrutiny extends to the scattered corpses of the workers, leading him to deduce that the location fell victim to an assault by a contingent of Iraqi soldiers who, having accomplished their mission, made a strategic retreat. Upon hearing Matthew's frustrations, Isaac endeavors to assuage his comrade's unease. Proposing a theory, Isaac suggests that the precise headshots leading to the worker's demise indicate the involvement of a highly skilled sniper. He posits the possibility that they might be facing off against a professional Iraqi sniper, possibly someone of the caliber of Juba. However, Matthews dismisses this hypothesis asserting that no Iraqi sniper could be proficient enough to eliminate all the workers in under 30 seconds. After enduring several additional hours of waiting, Matthews's patience finally wears thin, compelling him to take matters into his own hands. Emerging from the concealment, he gathers his belongings and instructs Isaac to cover him from the rear. With determination, Matthews strides toward the construction site. Upon arrival, he discovers a grim scene, with both soldiers and workers lying lifeless. Matthews presses onward, Meanwhile, Isaac faces challenges maintaining clear surveillance as his scope becomes increasingly blurry. Swiftly alerting Matthews to the issue, he is met with blame for not rectifying the situation earlier. In response, Isaac reminds Matthews that the faulty scope holds sentimental value, once belonging to their deceased friend, Dean, and holds profound emotional significance. Later, Matthews meticulously inspects the deceased bodies only to be taken aback by the uniformity of perfect headshots. A growing concern creeps into his mind as he contemplates the possibility of a lurking sniper. Urgently conveying his findings to Isaac, the latter recommends a swift evacuation from the perilous site. Despite Isaac's counsel, Matthew stands amidst the construction site, endeavoring to discern the potential direction of the deadly shots. Isaac, pleading with Matthews to retreat, regrettably, it's too late. The sniper locks onto Matthews and fires, hitting him in the abdomen. Witnessing the dire situation, Isaac rushes to save his fellow officer, employing a zigzag path to evade the incoming bullets. However, before he can safely move Matthews to a sheltered location, he himself succumbs to a shot in the leg. Forced to prioritize his own safety, Isaac leaves Matthews on the ground and manages to seek cover behind a protective wall. While Matthews recommends Isaac to contact the base for backup, Isaac, noticing the bullet wound on his leg, hastily attempts to stem the blood flow with a makeshift belt. Grabbing his radio bag, Isaac tries to establish communication with the base, only to discover that the radio has been hit and the antenna damaged by a bullet, rendering them unable to call for help. Simultaneously, Matthews urges Isaac to locate the sniper, hoping to retaliate Matthews persists in attempting to reach his sniper rifle. However, his efforts prove futile as he succumbs to the pain and blood loss, passing out midway. Recognizing the urgency of their situation and the inability to take immediate action, Isaac decides to seize the moment to extract the bullet from his leg. After successfully removing the bullet and bandaging the wound, Isaac too succumbs to unconsciousness in the unforgiving desert, leaving their fate hanging in the balance. In a later moment, 
Isaac awakens to the faint sound emanating from his radio earphone. The audio reveals an officer from the base attempting to establish communication. Isaac, elated at the prospect of help, promptly requests backup and urgently needed medical supplies. However, his enthusiasm turns to suspicion as the officer insists on knowing Isaac's precise location for the delivery of medical aid. A wariness settles in, causing Isaac to tread cautiously in his interactions with the unseen ally on the other end of the line. A breach of protocol. Isaac, detecting a foreign accent, realizes it's the enemy sniper using American frequencies. Despite being exposed, the sniper urges Isaac to keep talking, revealing a keen interest in learning more about him. Initially, Isaac rejects the sniper's demand, but when faced with a threat to Matthews' life, he reluctantly agrees. Isaac, buying time, requests the sniper to go first. Seizing the opportunity, he starts sketching a map on the ground, attempting to calculate the possible sniper positions. After a brief pause, the sniper, revealing himself as a regular Iraqi citizen aiming to protect his country, engages Isaac in conversation. The sniper delves into personal inquiries about Isaac's family, but Isaac, deeming it too personal, refuses to disclose. Taking a stand, Isaac criticizes the sniper, highlighting the irony of him targeting individuals contributing to the development of his own country. In response, the sniper laughs and acknowledges that the money involved is not for the benefit of Iraq, but is aimed at serving the interests of the USA. Later, when Isaac remains tight-lipped, the sniper again threatens Matthews. This time, Isaac dismisses the threat. In response, the sniper reveals knowledge about Dean's demise, shocking Isaac. Puzzled, he wonders how the sniper obtained this information. After a while attempting to drink water, Isaac discovers a hole in his bottle caused by the sniper's shot. The sniper, aware of Isaac's situation, discloses intentionally targeting Isaac's water bottle, the radio antenna, and his knee. He did this to render Isaac incapable of escaping. The sniper grimly predicts Isaac's demise before morning due to the substantial blood loss from his injured knee. Now, Isaac attempts to identify the precise weapon the sniper is wielding. He labels the sniper a terrorist, but the latter merely laughs, pointing out that Isaac, armed in a foreign land, is the one taking lives. Peering through his scope, Isaac eventually locates the sniper concealed within a heap of trash. Assessing the challenging conditions, Isaac deduces the sniper's professionalism and boldly proclaims that he is none other than Juba. Despite Isaac's insistence that he is Juba, the sniper firmly denies the association, asserting to be a typical Iraqi man. Isaac counters, suggesting the sniper might be a U.S. Army officer who betrayed them, but the sniper quickly dismisses this notion. He clarifies that he only resorts to lethal force when attacked first. As the conversation unfolds, Isaac succumbs to dehydration and exhaustion, collapsing on the ground. Seizing the moment, the sniper delivers a macabre declaration, revealing his sinister intention to mutilate Isaac's body after death. After a while, Isaac devises a plan to deceive the sniper by placing his helmet and jacket on a wooden stick. Unfortunately, the sniper remains vigilant, not falling for the ruse, and Isaac loses his helmet in the process. Left with limited options, Isaac decides on a desperate maneuver, making a suicidal dash toward a deceased soldier nearby in hopes of finding something useful in the bag. Upon his return, Isaac discovers that his scope is damaged, rendering it unusable for spotting the sniper. Meanwhile, Isaac senses interference in his radio signals and realizes that Matthews is still alive. Yelling at Matthews, Isaac shares the location of the sniper. Matthews, armed with a shiny emblem from his pocket, surveys the heap of trash while Isaac attempts to divert the sniper's attention, enabling Matthews to stealthily approach his rifle. Simultaneously, the sniper discloses a personal history, revealing he was once a teacher in Baghdad. Motivated by revenge after his students fell victim to an American attack, he took up arms against those he deemed responsible. Inquiring about Isaac's persistent use of the faulty scope, the sniper, met with silence, threatens to shoot Matthews, unaware that he is still alive. Isaac finally speaks up, disclosing that he carries the flawed scope in memory of his friend Dean, acknowledging his own mistake that led to Dean's death. Meanwhile, Matthews, placing his rifle, blindly targets the pile of trash. 
He fires multiple shots, but as he prepares to reload, the sniper retaliates, hitting Matthews squarely on the shoulder. Instructed by Isaac, Matthews begins crawling towards him. Tragically, before Matthews can reach safety, he is shot from behind the head and killed instantly. Witnessing Matthews' tragic demise, Isaac breaks down, expressing his desire to return home. Surprisingly, the sniper reassures Isaac that if that's truly what he wants, he won't shoot him. After a while, the sniper questions why Isaac remains in the war zone, given that the conflict has already ended. Isaac, pausing, admits that he's there because he is the one who accidentally killed Dean. Isaac confesses that he mistakenly shot Dean while aiming at another sniper. He reveals that he has been deceiving everyone about Dean's death, attributing it to an enemy sniper. Amid this revelation, Isaac hears radio transmitter noise and desperately crawls towards it. He discovers the radio is severely damaged, allowing him only to eavesdrop on the conversation. Suddenly, Isaac hears the sniper using his name to request help from the base. It dawns on him that the sniper has been contacting the U.S. base, seeking additional assistance. Desperate to intervene, Isaac attempts to interrupt the conversation, but his efforts prove futile. Later, Isaac awakens to a crow pecking at his leg wound. Managing to drag Matthew's sniper rifle, he aims at the sniper concealed in the trash heap. Just then, he notices helicopters approaching, prompting him to reveal his location by pushing down a nearby wall. The sniper, attempting to spot Isaac, is thwarted by the dust kicked up from the falling wall. With the sniper's location identified, Isaac takes a shot, unable to confirm its impact. To find out, he stands up, expecting retaliation. Surprisingly, he isn't shot, leading him to believe his shot hit its mark, surmising that the sniper is either injured or deceased. Shortly after the helicopters land, soldiers carry Isaac on a stretcher. He attempts to convey the presence of the hidden sniper but struggles to communicate effectively with the officers. As the helicopters take off, the sniper unexpectedly opens fire, picking off soldiers one by one. Before Isaac can warn the soldiers about the sniper, the pilot gets shot, causing the helicopter to crash and claiming the lives of everyone on board. In the final scene, the sniper, disguising himself as an American soldier, calls the American soldier's base, requesting another rescue team. The twist leaves the story hanging in suspense, with the sniper potentially exploiting his deceptive guise for further deadly actions. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching.